Hello, everybody. I'm Jesse Waters, along with Juan Williams, Martha McCallum, Greg Gutfeld, and Judge Janine. It's 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. It's a huge weekend for conservatives at CPAC down in Florida. A lineup of heavy-hitting Republicans have been taking on Joe Biden and his radical agenda, while also calling out cancel culture and the left's love of socialism. Conservatives explaining how they plan to counter Biden and the Democrats. Take a look. We are an oasis of freedom in a nation that's suffering in many parts of the country under the yoke of oppressive lockdowns. Florida got it right, and the lockdown states got it wrong. The left, of, co of course, does hate the Bill of Rights. Why? Well, because the Bill of Rights talks about things that the government can't do. And that, to them, is like blasphemy. Joe Biden and the radicals in his administration, they are already overshooting. They are already going too far. Their policies don't work. They are disasters. There is no more pernicious threat to America than the rejection of our founding principles and our heritage and our tradition. They don't want to compete with us in the battle of ideas because they know they'd lose. They just want to cancel us. I want to make sure you're all aware of President Biden's new slogan. Open borders and closed schools. And Donald Trump is set to return to the national spotlight with a big speech at CPAC on Sunday. The former president is expected to rip apart Joe Biden's disastrous policies and lay out a path for Republicans to retake Congress in 2022. Judge Janine is down there at CPAC mm -hmm. in Orlando. All right, two questions for you, Judge Janine. Who had the biggest response so far of all the speakers that you saw? And what was the general theme of most of the speeches, in your opinion? Well, I think that, you know, it really was a tie between Ron DeSantis and Ted Cruz uh, in terms of the greatest applause. Uh, Ted Cruz was very fiery. I mean, he was he was taking no prisoners today. And in terms of the theme, Jesse, it was all about, you know, getting back to America and the America that our founding fathers intended. And that means freedom of speech, the Second Amendment, the ability to survive in a country where leftists leftists and socialism seems to be the desire. And it was almost like I felt that it was a run-up to a presidential primary, that all the big contenders were there, that they were getting ready for the big game, that they wanted to be seen as a person who, for example, mm -hmm. uh, Mike Lee talked about the Bill of Rights. Each, each candidate, so to speak, up there, from Ron DeSantis talking about COVID and how his state was open. And it was a theme that played throughout the whole day. Because when you get to America, Jesse, especially if you're from uh, New York, if you get to Florida, you realize everything's open. The sun is shining. The restaurants are open. People are happy. And uh, I did a little old-fashioned street justice, Jesse, and you'll see it tomorrow night on my show. <laughs> so that was fun, too. Good, good. And aren't you speaking down there as well? I, I, I was on with Tommy Lahren and uh, Lawrence Jones, but I'm not speaking here, but I'll be doing my show down here, and we're going to have a preview okay. of uh, what's going on here when I do my show tomorrow night. Excellent. All right, Greg Gutfeld, you've covered CPAC for many years. We, I think you remember when Breitbart was down yeah. there, and it was kind of a merry band of pranksters kind of scene. It's evolved a lot differently over the years. What's your interpretation of CPAC in 2021? God, I'm just thinking, when I, I, I Red Eye, the old show, we actually did, uh, we opened for Ann Coulter, like an opening band, and we were <laughs> up on stage. I can't remember, it must have been 2008 or 2009. Um, I think it has to do a little bit of a, a, an evolution, and maybe it naturally it will happen. Sometimes it always feels that it's hard to tell one year from the next with CPAC because the themes are often very, very, the sa very similar. And I'm sure you could say that about uh, liberal events as well. But love or hate Trump, you know, he opened America's eyes to the power of media narratives. And I think um, he, he, we, the right has to understand that they're coming for you. And, and I think it's important that we, that we uh, whether you're rightist or libertarian, stemming the media 
tide of domestic terror propaganda. If you aren't voting Democrat, you're a danger to the Republic, I think is going to be the next three years message. Um, and everything they said about you as a person from 2016 to 2020 will be nothing compared to what they say about you in this full court demonization press. Yep. So I think it's really important that that the new breed and the new blood is up for that challenge and also reaching out to the new type of voters that are coming to the Republican Party. I'm talking about the ones that are leaving the Democratic Party, the blue collar workers, the people who are seeing their rights, their free speech being hindered. They're, you know, how can you be part of a party that won't stand up for you when there's threat of cancellation? So I think, you know, looking at like, let's look at Tucker's show. Tucker's show is extremely successful, but it's not cookie cutter conservatism. He's looking at the diminished middle class and the complete shafting of the working class. That should be what the Republican Party should look at. That makes sense. It does seem to me, uh, Martha, that those themes have been emerging at CPAC. If you've listened to DeSantis talk about immigration or Matt Gates talk about mm -hmm. industrial policy, those themes are there. And I think that's probably due to Donald Trump's philosophical influence. Yeah, no doubt. And one of the things that I like to do, you know, is go back and look at some of these old speeches. And today I went back and looked at uh, President Trump, former President Trump's 2011 speech at CPAC, which is really, you know, there was all this energy in the room and everybody was all excited. Mm -hmm. They said he was the surprise guest and he came out and sort of, you know, tempted everybody with maybe I'm going to run in uh, 2012. And then, uh, of course, he ran in 2016. And just two months after that speech at CPAC, um, Barack Obama, then president, came out at the White House Correspondents' Dinner and tried to roast Donald Trump in the audience, right? Which made me realize, you know, what a threat he recognized at that point. Um, it was pretty clear that Donald Trump was emerging on the scene in a very big way. So watching all of these guys today, I just couldn't help but think, you know, they're all trying to have that magic. You know, this is why I love to cover politics. They're all trying to see if they can get that crowd going. But can they do it to the extent that he was able to then and that I think he's still able to um, when he gets out there on Sunday night? Uh, there's just there's just no no comparison comparison in terms of who can get that crowd riled up at CPAC, no doubt. So Sunday, Juan, you'll be glued to the TV watching Donald Trump reemerge <laughs> after, um, after going down to Mar-a-Lago for a little hiatus. <laughs> what are you expecting from Donald Trump? Are you happy that he's back on the scene? Are you concerned? What does Juan Williams think? Uh, Jesse, I think only one thing can come out of CPAC that really matters, and it's Donald Trump's speech, and it's whether or not Donald Trump uh, says, oh, you know what, that election was stolen, and I still want my fair treatment, and I think we need to fix the system because it was stolen, or does he say, you know what, I was wrong, and Joe Biden is a legitimate president of this country, and we need to move on. Uh, you know, to me, all he, you know, if he talks about cancel culture, if he starts talking about the size of the stimulus package, it doesn't affect anything that impacts me or you. Uh, it's all about whether or not he stands with the people who conducted that January 6th insurrection or read it, whether he says those people behaved abysmally and they don't deserve our support. I mean, I think, you know, speaking to what you've been mentioning, I think he's going to leave open 2024 because that's a leverage point for him in terms of exercising some power over all the people that Judge Janine mentioned who are up there trying to, you know, be the heir apparent to Donald Trump and the Republican Party. Uh, um, but I just don't think that uh, there's makes much difference uh, about 2024, even though Mitch McConnell now says he would back Donald Trump if he is the nominee in 24. I just don't think that's it. I think what it is, is does Donald Trump finally say, I got beat in 2020? I don't expect to hear that, but I do expect him to <laughs> yeah, look forward. Be the big game. I wouldn't count on that. <laughs> All right. Coming up.